there, it's Sylvia and this week I wanted to read Midnight Sun, the new addition to the Twilight Saga. This book follows the plotline of the original Twilight, but this time from Edward's perspective. You can't say that I'm not dedicated because this book is 690 pages. I've actually never read any of the Twilight books. When they were at their peak popularity, I didn't really like to read. Um, and when I did start liking to read, I've just never been into fantasy or sci-fi or really anything that isn't contemporary fiction. But I do know the plot line of Twilight. I've seen the movies, not to say that that's the same thing. Don't come for me. But I, I'm, a, I'm familiar with the storyline. So this book is basically the story of Edward Cullen, a vampire struggling to fight his addiction to love. The book starts out in high school, or as Edward calls it, purgatory. Uh, he thinks very little of humans. They are silly with their unhealthy skin, so caught up in trivial things like the presence of a new girl. Edward has a very unique ability to read other people's minds, which honestly sounds horrible. I would not want to know what other people are thinking all the time as no thank you. Because of his special powers, he has to hear all about what people think about the pretty new girl who he thinks is actually very average looking. But little does he know her smell is above average. When he finally meets the elusive Bella Swan, he is overcome with his carnal instinct. This guy literally starts planning all the ways he could possibly murder her ranging from whether he should kill her and all the other students in biology or if he's able to control and tame his desire and then would lure her out to the woods and to kill her then. If planning your lover's murder doesn't scream romance, I don't know what does. Edward is able to temporarily tame what he calls his little monster within and dips to hide out in Alaska. This look at his trip to Alaska shows us that no one is immune to the charms of Edward Cullen. He turns down fellow vampire and eventually returns to Forks because Edward is a man, a manly man, and manly men don't hide. And worst case scenario, he loses control and kills the girl, whatever. Edward returns and has little contact with Bella, mostly because he can't control himself or make up his mind about what he's gonna do. Despite the fact that he blatantly ignores her for weeks, he spends all of his time thinking about her. He watches her through the eyes of others. He listens in on hard conversations. He stalks her, essentially. One of my favorite things about this book is that Edward repeatedly describes Bella as having liquid brown eyes with translucent or clear skin. That kind of sounds like a zombie, not gonna lie. Um, something that's also really interesting is that before their romance, before they really even know each other, Alice, another vampire who can predict the future, uh, seems that the, sees that the most likely outcome of their relationship is that Bella will also become a creature of the night. To turn someone into a vampire is Edward's essential worst nightmare. He would not wish that upon anybody and is determined not to let that happen. Despite all this, he just can't stay away from Bella. The most frustrating thing about his obsession with Bella is that she is one of the only people whose mind he can't read. Her mysteriousness is torture to him, especially because she is so good and pure and attracts danger. For example, the parking lot scene. We all know this scene where Bella is at the wrong place at the wrong time and almost gets hit by a car. Luckily, Edward is always watching her, so he uses his vampy abilities to save her. This is one of the first big clues to her that Edward is not a normal teenage boy. This life-threatening event allows Edward to realize all the danger that Bella is in. He becomes obsessed with the idea that an earthquake or a meteor shower is gonna come. So naturally, the only sane thing for him to do is to sneak into her bedroom and watch her sleep at night he realizes that Bella deserves a guardian angel. And if he can't be that for her, he wants to be her guardian vampire. 
He is able to play this role again when he saves Bella from almost being murdered and raped by a gang of men in a dark alley because we all know that the Forks area is incredibly dangerous. It is after his rescue that Bella gets him to confess that he and his family are vampires and that they don't drink human blood, they drink animal blood. All the elaborate work done to keep their family's secret, the decades of practice on how to look human, the numerous new identities, and it really didn't take that much for Edward to crack and throw the rest of his family under the bus. This is the conversation that really kickstarts their romance. From here, there is a lot of erotic hand-holding, licking her tears, and cradling her like a baby. Bella has awakened Edward's sexuality, exposing him to a whole new world. And he isn't the only one. Bella is already asking about jumping his bones after their first date. He feels comfortable enough to introduce Bella to his family, and all is going well until they run into another coven of vampires who are ready for a fight. This tracker vampire, James, essentially just a vampire that's obsessed with hunting, becomes fixated on killing Bella. And this is really where the novel goes downhill for me and gets really boring. The Cullens hatch this elaborate plan to get Bella to safety and then hunt James. Bella, Alice, and Jasper go to Phoenix to hide. The others go after James, but then James gets away and then tricks Bella into meeting him. Uh, there's this elaborate car scene that's super long where the Cullens are trying to get to Bella in time. And for all this buildup, they get there in time and kill James incredibly easily within minutes, like not that much of a fight at all. Bella is very injured and has some venom in her system, but Edward is able to use like the last of his self-control, I guess, and, and suck the venom out and a little bit of blood, but like not too much. And it's not even over yet. There are like a hundred more pages of this book after this scene. The most important thing that happens after this is that Edward realizes Bella won't be safe if he's in her life and decides that once she's healthy again, he will flee. There's also like a really cute prom scene, but like that's besides the point. So that was Midnight Sun. Edward is an anxious, love-struck teenager. Sure, he may be a hundred-year-old blood-sucking monster, but he still loves it when his girlfriend wears his jacket and carries around a bottle cap of hers as a memento. One of my favorite things is that Edward uses something called archaic curses a lot. I didn't know what this was, so I looked it up. And some archaic curses include gosh, zoots, and G. So that's fun. I definitely get the Twilight hype, even though it was written like a mediocre fanfic, but it was a lot better than I was expecting. My final thought is that it could have been at least 200 pages shorter. But besides that, I'm satisfied. Thanks for watching.